Hello, potential amateur radio enthusiasts. It's Robbie, W1RCP, and we're back with another installment here. This is Element 2, that's the technician exam, sub-Element 7, Charlie. What is the primary purpose of a dummy load? A dummy load is to prevent transmitting signals over the air when making tests. So a dummy load absorbs all of the RF. Now I have my homemade dunce load and if you can see on the inside there are two pieces of copper with there are 30 resistors on the inside in parallel that equal 50 ohms and that is connected to the output of my radio so that when I transmit the majority of the RF is soaked up into this it can be heard a few feet away but it won't make it around the world, that's for sure. So that is a dummy load to prevent transmitting signals over the air when making tests. So if I wanted to try my radio out and see, hey, how's it working? I could do that. If I want to test a transmit function on that radio, I can do it and I can receive it on the radio in the other room. I've done that in a couple of videos. Which of the following is used to determine if an antenna is resonant at the desired operating frequency? And that is an antenna analyzer. And I have one right here. I actually have two, but the other one is so far away, I don't want to go get it. But this is called a nano VNA. In the nano VNA, you can hook it up to an antenna and do a scan and see if it is operating or resonant on that particular frequency. So, the correct answer is an antenna analyzer. What does a dummy load consist of? Well, goodness gracious, didn't we just talk about a dummy load just a minute ago? A dummy load consists of a non-inductive resistor mounted on a heat sink. Or, in the case of the oil can dummy load, it's actually in the oil itself. So this dummy load, like I explained, has non-inductive resistors, which means that they don't create a lot of magnetism when you run something through them. And it's mounted on a heat sink. So this copper on each side allows some of the heat to radiate outside of the larger surface area. This is only for 5 watts, so it doesn't have to be very big. And then the heat escapes through these holes that I made right here. So that is what a dummy load is. What reading on an SWR meter indicates a perfect impedance match between the, uh, the antenna and the feed line? Well, the correct answer here is one to one. And on your SWR or your watt meter, your SWR meter, you want to see it in that one to one range. You don't want to see on this particular model, you don't want to see a deflection of the needle. As it goes up, it goes to 1.52, and then just at the red region, you see a three. You don't want an SWR above a three. That means that most of your power is being reflected back, and then your radio is going to be very unhappy. Why do most solid state transmitters reduce output power as SWR increases beyond a certain level? That is to protect the output amplifier transistors. As power is being reflected back to them, they have to absorb that power. And if you think of power like a heater, then you know that heat has got to go somewhere. Well, it reduces that power so they don't overheat and cook themselves. What does an SWR reading of 4 to 1 indicate? Going back to look at our SWR meter, I have one of these somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I tried to go find it, but I gave up. But just after that 3 to 1 there at the red, you notice that 4 to 1 is going to be in that red. That, that means that you have a severe impedance mismatch. Question number seven. What happens to power lost in the feed line? Well, if you have feed line, and feed line has resistance, and it, if there is current flowing through it and resistance, 
then you're going to have power. And that power inside of this feed line is going to be radiated as heat. And it, what happens if it gets too hot? You don't want to find out. Which instrument can be used to determine SWR? And that is a directional watt meter. Well, guess what? I'm bringing this picture back up because you see, you see REF and forward. So one of those is reverse or reflected and the other one is forward. And you can press the button on this watt meter and you can read the power going forwards to the antenna and backwards coming back to your radio. So that is a directional watt meter. Now that is an inexpensive VHF watt meter and SWR meter. You can go ahead and get your real expensive one if you want to sink a lot of money into it. So a directional watt meter is for your SWR. Question number nine. Which of the following causes failure of coax cables? Well, going back to this piece of coax right here, if I were to leave this B and C in the rain, water is going to get down inside of it. Water is bad for coax. So you do not want moisture to get into your coax. That will cause it to have a degraded performance, uh, bad receive, bad transmit. It could cause failure. It could cause a short. So moisture contamination is the correct answer. Question number 10. Why should the outer jacket of coax cable be resistant to ultraviolet light? This is not resistant to ultraviolet light. This has a plastic outer coating that ultraviolet light will, if I were to leave this outside, over the course of about a good summer here in South Georgia, this would be gone. If you live in places that have lots of sun, this stuff would not last even that long. Uh, most coax that is made for outside is going to have a jacket that is ultraviolet resistant. So why should that outer jacket of coax cable be resistant to ultraviolet light? Well, the jacket itself is, is, is not what's important. It's the fact that when this starts to crack, water's going to get inside. We do not want water in our cables. Question 11, and the last one for section sub-element 7C is, what is a disadvantage of air core coaxial cable when compared to foam or solid dielectric types? And the answer is it requires special techniques to prevent moisture in the cable. So air core is just as it sounds, as the majority of it is air. So there is space for water to hang out. Whereas if you have a solid dielectric, and the dielectric is the plastic or whatever material that's in it, it protects that cable. So air core requires special techniques to prevent moisture in the cable. And you've noticed that a lot of these questions have had to do with moisture. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope that uh, we can see you on the next one. Have a great one. If you like this video, please hit that like button, thumbs it up, and please subscribe to the channel to show your support. Thank you so much. I'm Rob W1RCP73.